Ramanujan for G is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. So, I am going to continue the discussion on uh, class 11 physics today by introducing a new, um, you know, not in order, but by introducing uh, simple harmonic motion. Okay. The idea of problems in simple harmonic motion. Okay. Simple harmonic motion is uh um how can i put it is um uh, is is very important to understand as um uh, as you uh, uh, start looking at um uh, how systems behave which follow a certain um uh, equation okay now you all understand f equals ma, right? Now, when the f, right, when the force uh, is counted by a second force, okay? Now, there is typically in simple harmonic motion, you have the ma, okay, uh, being proportionate to the distance okay linearly proportional to the distance so you have ma equals minus kx in the spring block system or other similar things uh you know and so that's why when they first deal with simple harmonic motion they explain it using mathematics okay so first they deal with it using mathematics and then they kind of build a theory around it okay simple harmonic motion is is actually uh, complicated but it is a very integral part of what you have to learn okay now as you all know the most common systems that that follow simple harmonic motion are um, uh, you know the the pendulum right the pendulum everyone understands then the spring and block uh, mass right then there is the uh, you know the the block floating in water like like in a boat right now in a boat if you do this right the boat rocks right now the more it goes in the greater the buoyancy okay <clears throat> and so as a result that too is a kind of simple harmonic motion. Okay. So d square x dt square minus omega square x. Okay. So a equals minus omega square x. When you have a countervailing force, counteracting force, okay, which works in this form. Okay. Now this quantity omega square is a very funny quantity it is the square of a number and that number right is central to your understanding of simple harmonic motion that number omega right we had omega angular velocity when we looked at circular motion right here also there is an omega in uniform circular motion you had m omega square x right m omega square mv square by r m and v equals omega cross r so this is related to that but it's not the same okay think of this as the x component of that okay just if you projected that circular motion onto us onto an x or onto a y or onto any line right let's say you had simple harmonic motion and you projected that motion into the x into the y right you will get this simple uh, uh, you know you had let's say you had uniform circular motion and you projected it onto 
the X or a Y or any axis in one dimension, you end up with simple harmonic motion. So it is intimately related with uniform circular motion and it happens when you project it onto uh, uh, X or a Y. Okay. So X equals R cos omega T is the solution. This is a solution to this equation. Okay. Notice where the omega goes. Okay. This omega determines this. And what is that omega? Okay. So in simple harmonic motion, what essentially happens is there is something going like this, like in your clock, right? It is following a steady motion. Okay. And forever going in that steady motion back and forth, back and forth. Back. A spring on a, a, a body attached to a spring on a flat surface, right? On a, a, a smooth surface uh, with no, um, uh, you know, where the spring is uh, without any distension, right? It, it is not going to follow some, uh, any motion at all. It's going to be at rest. Now, if you pull it a little bit and let it go, right? is said to follow simple harmonic motion. So on a smooth surface, it will go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth forever. Okay. There is no, um, the funny thing is, is, this is also wherever you have a force F of R or F of X, which is dependent on X, you have a conservative force wherever you can write f as only a function of of position right like circular motion only a function of position gmm by r square right charge coulomb's law q, q1 q2 by r square right wherever there is that dependency right here f equals negative kx Instead of 1 by r square, it is just kx. Okay. So the force is negative and it is pulling it backwards. Okay. So and it keeps that way. When, when it goes, when it compresses, it pushes it out. When it expands, it push pulls it back. Okay. So this d square x by dt square equals minus square x, right? So omega square is what? So how do you write omega square? Omega square is k over m. Okay. So omega square equals k over m. Okay. So now k is what? K is the spring constant. M is what? The wave. Okay. So there is an interplay by, uh, based on that ratio, right? That ratio, right, determines how fast it's going to move, okay? It is not how much you pull that's going to de determine your frequency, okay? The frequency is going to de determine, be determined by the K over M ratio, okay? So... It is just like that even when you in a simple pendulum, it does not matter how far you pull the and let it go. Okay. Depends on L over G. Okay. 2 pi times root of L over G. Right. Like that. Here also it is 2 pi times root of M over K. Okay. So K by M equals omega square. Okay, so remember that. Okay, so whenever you have an equation d square x by dt square equals minus omega square x or minus minus some constant times x, right? This kind of different equation sets you up for simple harmonic motion. Note that. Okay, so this is the basis of simple harmonic motion. It is derived from that equation. Okay, now the formal solution to this. It's firstly a second order uh, linear, uh, uh, linear differential equation. d square x by dt equals minus omega square x. 
x of t equals a cos omega t plus b sin omega t. It will be a linear combination of cosine and sine with the same omega. Okay. Now, this is also can be written in the form anything which is in the form a cos omega t plus b sin omega t where the omegas are constant can be written in the form a uh, 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 you know square root of a square plus b square times cos of omega t plus phi where phi is tan inverse of b by a okay so you can write it as a sing as a phased x equals a cos omega t so it is you can think of it as a boundary condition okay but all these motions will follow boundary condition meaning you write a, a cos omega t plus phi the phi is just a phase change starting point okay the starting point for the differential equation boundary condition for the differential equation can be different okay so this is the 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 the, the basis of simple harmonic motion and once you understand that it is derived from this uh, equation everything else follows from uh, from that one idea okay later we will we will look at the 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 situation as to why simple harmonic motion in normal life stops right if you have a uh, what is that a spring you push it it will slowly damp what causes damping well the normal things that that uh, you know uh, uh, that that happen in life like friction they cause the whole thing to dampen, right? So friction eats up the energy of the simple harmonic motion. In simple harmonic motion, the total energy remains constant, okay? Because it's a conserving force. Just like potential energy, if you drop a ball, we say potential energy plus kinetic energy equals constant, because it's a conserving force. This is also a conserving force, potential energy plus kinetic energy equals Anytime they introduce potential energy, typically there is this idea okay, that there is inside it some conserving force. But there is when there is a non-conserving force that will eat away at this, right? So that's how you have the damping. Okay, so when you have damping, it will if there was no damping, it will keep going on and on and on. Okay, but if there's damping, it will subside. Now, this same differential equation, this same ideas carry over to say electricity and magnetism carry over to other uh, uh, systems as well okay so with that i will continue uh, i will continue on to i'll make a little more progress so now x equals a cos omega t plus b sin omega t as i said you can rewrite it and then you can derive the equation okay so now uh, you know the mathematical derivation of this equation you can start like this you can say that if c if this if this is the differential equation let us say that this is the answer right uh, e, e times lambda t and then you will end up with lambda square right therefore c equals and therefore you can therefore write uh, lambda square e to the power of uh, lambda t equals minus c and therefore c equals uh, plus or minus i times square root of c and therefore you have a i therefore you end up with this differential equation right and as you know e to the power of i t is cos theta plus i sin theta the the i sine the i sine thetas cancel so you just end up with cos thetas two cos thetas okay so that is the basic idea there okay so this is same uh, thing right so you just end up with this okay and therefore at t equals zero you end up with this one and then the uh you know and then uh, so you just have this this uh cos theta plus i sine theta right so um okay so the most common case where the, where there is considered to be simple harmonic motion massless spring connected to a block okay so now this block if you perturb it then it will execute simple harmonic motion up and down up and down up and down up and down forever okay so m m times a equals negative kx and a is d square x by dt square and the, uh, and that is equal to minus kx so when you extend the spring it is going to pull you back when you compress the spring it is going to 
push you out. Okay, so that is Hooke's law. Okay, and because it changes direction, right? F equals negative kx. It keeps changing direction. This is always true. Okay, so now <clears throat> what happens is at what points does the block come uh, come to rest? Okay, it the block comes to rest. In, in, for in this equation, at what points does the block come to rest? Okay, the block comes to rest when a uh, when this right uh, d square x by dt square is at its maximum. Okay, so the block will go and at the maximum force it comes to rest, and then it turns around. So at that maximum force, the velocity goes to zero, okay? And at that maximum extension, the velocity goes to zero, the spring holds all its energy in the form of potential energy. What is the potential energy of a spring? Just as the force of the spring is minus kx, the work done is integral kx dx, therefore it will become half kx square, okay? So when it, at, at the, uh, at that point, the kinetic energy goes to zero and the potential energy becomes maximum at, at its maximum extension. The uh, 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 force is also maximum because the extension is the maximum. More the, more the force, right? And then the extension decreases, it decreases, and therefore the there is more, uh, as, and it's moving also now, right? The force has decreased, it is also moving. Potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy. Okay, so you understand that that whole system total energy remains the same. Okay, total energy is remains the same half k maximum extension square because maximum extension there's no uh, potential energy, right? So, what is the uh, well, there's no kinetic energy, right? So, what is what is the uh, potential energy at maximum unit? half k times amplitude square? Okay, so that is the most, right? And when it reaches back to the equilibrium position, there is no x. There's no extension, so there is no x. The force on a, a Hooke's law tells you that when it's at L0, let's say there's a spring and you just put one mass here, right? There's no extension, so the spring has no force, right? But when you extend it by a little x, there is force equal to k times x. So when it reaches back that x equals zero point, right? At that point, you have the most, you have no, at x equals zero, you have zero what? x equals zero, you have zero extension. Okay, so you have zero potential energy. So all that half k a square becomes half k, the total energy stays half k a square. So all that half k a square becomes kinetic energy. So half k a square equals half mv square at, at no extension point when it's executing simple harmonic motion. So that's the energy side of it. Okay, so why did I explain this so that you understand all this? So this omega is called angular frequency. And so if you have m a equals k x, so k by m is, is omega square. Okay. So if k by m is equal to omega square, then omega equals root of k over m. So that's the main thing you've got to understand. Now, uh, and then from that, uh, as I said, initial phase factor, if you, if you write it in this form, this is the same thing, same differential equation. It is just that it, it has an initial phase factor of the or epoch or motion. So it is a it is still a, a, a cosine form, but it has a phi. Okay, so now a bar is root of a square plus b square, and phi is tan inverse of d by a. Okay, so that's it's just a play of the mathematics. Okay, so this is if you learn differential equations, you will understand how this works. Okay, and you can derive it yourself. You can start with x this equation, do uh, uh, differentiate it two times, and then you will end up with exactly this. <laughs> So remember that this is the solution of this, and then you are saved. And where possible, so you can drop this term also, and you still have a solution. Okay. So keep that in mind. Tan phi equals negative plus or minus d by a.
okay phi equals tan inverse of p by a okay so keep that in mind and then use that a okay and then understand what i explained in terms of the conservation conserving inner force that is a conserving force total energy is constant in the case of simple harmonic motion and then you can derive that and then you understand the it is tied to the amplitude how does how is it tied to the extension right maximum extension is called the amplitude okay that is this a bar here okay so that is the main thing you got to understand now if you attach two springs in series uh, versus two springs in parallel right uh, find the os uh, frequency of oscillation of mass m in each of the cases right now remember that springs are like they are holders of energy and therefore they are like capacitances for those who are in class who are doing class um uh, 12 springs are like capacitances and capacitances when you have two capacitances in parallel it is just additive when they have two capacitance you just add the capacitor capacitors like that you here you add the spring constants and when you have two two of them in series then you do one by k1 plus one by k2 equals one by k okay so that's all you need to do okay so then if you have two in series you have uh, uh k by two the the net k is k by two one by k one one by k plus one by k equals uh uh, uh one by k uh, k new k equivalent right k equal to is k by two okay so uh <clears throat> it is when you do put them uh in series if you put them in parallel it is just k1 plus k2 okay okay so uh so that is how uh you know uh springs work okay so um so what i'm now going to do is i'm now um uh, going to uh you know add on to what we have discussed so far okay but to add on to what we have discussed so far i'm going to uh you know maybe look at a few simple first let's look at this this simple problem okay it undergoes simple harmonic motion along the x axis shown above where x equals zero okay and the object's equilibrium position which of the following graphs best shows the relationship between the object's acceleration and its displacement okay so this is a very straightforward question if you understand this equation okay so a equals minus constant this is a positive constant remember k and m are both positive right times x so it is a negative sloping straight line a negative sloping straight line going through the origin this is the equation right so they are trying to see if you understand the meaning of this equation a versus x is like this and i already discussed this force is just ma right so that is the so a is the best answer it's not this it's not this it's not this it's not this okay so uh so then we looked at this uh two springs and all this right so now <clears throat> what happens when a instead of keeping it in a uh, horizontal way you keep it in a vertical way okay now when you keep it in a vertical way it's still experience a simple harmonic motion and you may ask why okay? it is because what um, effectively happens is that there is a neutral position which where the weight mg of the block exactly equals k times l okay now if you pull it a little more from that neutral position right so there is a status quo extension Okay. Now, when you pull it beyond that, it then experiences, uh, uh, you know, simple harmonic motion about that, uh, uh, that uh, minimum extension. The 
mg over k equals l so that is the the status quo extension when you add a little y to it then it will bounce up and down uh, you know this is for the uh, spring uh, for the mass hung from the roof of a uh, from a roof and the, uh, there is g added right so g is just a constant ng is what ng is a constant right so it is just uh, you know, uh, a constant in that differential equation and essentially it gets uh, um, uh, uh, removed from that differential equation. Okay? So, and then you still have that same uh, bobbing up and down kind of motion. It is still a uh, 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 simple harmonic motion and its omega angular frequency is still the same k over square root of k over n. Okay, angular frequency is still square root of k over n. So, and remember, omega is related to omega equals 2 pi by t, right? Omega is, is 2 pi by t. Only thing it has a different name. It's called angular frequency. P plus k equals period when you perform circular motion. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at this. An unstretched ideal spring hangs vertically from a support. Uh, 0.4 kg is then attached to the lower end of the spring. The object is pulled down a distance 0.35 meters below the unstretched position. Released from that the graph of the subsequent. Notice that this is sinusoidal. <clears throat> now he's asking you. So this is the thing, right? So now, what is the extension? We saw that that there is this status quo extension, right? He's asking you about that status quo extension first. At which of the following times is the upward velocity the greatest? Right? So the upward velocity is what? Right? So this is just linear motion, right? So you have y of t, right? This position keeps changing, right? It's y of t is greatest at the top. No. At the top, it's just halt it, right? When you do, when it goes this way, this way, this way, this way, when it reaches that extreme point, it halts, right? Where is its velocity the most? It's at the status quo extension. Okay, and what is that status quo extension? That status quo extension is this point. It's in between, right? So when it goes this way, that way, it goes equal, uh, uh, equally this way and equally that way. So it so at what times is it it is at uh, um, which of the following times is the upward axial velocity of the object see an unstretched behind from a vertical is then attached to the uh, then the is pulled down okay so now he's asking you for the upward so the upward velocity means this when it's pulled down he's saying the initial extension is negative 0.35 right so <clears throat> It's declining and therefore it's going up, coming back, going up, coming back. T equals zero, it is pulled down, and then released, right? So here it is coming down. Here it is going up. So he's measuring uh, the decline like this. So he's asking when is it going upwards the fastest? So upward velocity that is the greatest at. 0.25. Okay, so he's trying to see if you've understood what happens in this picture. This picture. Okay, so what happens in this picture? They want to see if you have understood all the details of it. Okay, so and of course, you can also just use mathematics to solve this, right? So when is uh, the slope, the maximum here, right here. You can see at this point, the slope is the maximum. dy by dt is the velocity, right? So what is the spring constant? The spring constant is tied to the period, right? The period is what? One second. One equals two pi times root of m over k. Period is one. Two pi times root of k over m, right? Two times, two pi times root of k over m, right? So uh, m is given <clears throat> m is 0.4 okay and uh, so otherwise you can also just use kx equals ma and then you can use the extension okay 
So keep that in mind. And therefore, you end up with 16 Newton per meter. Note the uh, unit also. Newton per meter, F equals Kx, right? So F is Newton. Uh, X is meter. Spring constant is Newton per meter. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go over these details. But I'm next going to little bit explain these other systems, right? The bobbing uh, boat, right? The bobbing boat also follows simple harmonic motion. Why? Because when you push the boat, distance, right? It, it is at uh, equilibrium. The boat has a weight and therefore it sinks a little bit into the water. When you push it some more, it will then bob up and down, up and down, up and down. And why is that? Because the buoyancy is proportional, linearly proportional to the level to which you have pushed the boat down. Okay, and so that's what is, and when you push the boat down, <clears throat> so mg equals a rho gl, the weight of the displaced liquid, so weight of the displaced liquid is proportional to the force. Okay. So, A rho G L is the, rho is the density, right? A times L is the, if it goes down a little bit, that is the amount of water that is displaced. So, the amount of displaced water equals the weight of the, uh, 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 the, the CS. status quo is when, when there's the status quo, right? Weight of floating body equals weight of displaced liquid, right? But when you push it some more, the buoyancy equals the excess liquid that has been pushed. There is the uh, the force that the that the body experiences is equal to the liquid that it has displaced. So when you push it a little more, the extra displacement is equal to the force that it experiences. The buoyancy is, is in in uh, the 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 extra buoyancy is equal to a rho G L, where L is the extra uh, uh, submerging that you have added to the block. Okay, so remember that, and therefore you therefore end up with this M A equals <clears throat> A rho G L, right? And therefore the X uh, D L by D T, right? So the rate at which it will it will bob, right, will relate to that. The, the, the uh, therefore A, A is what D square L by so keep that in mind. So that so floating block on flo floating liquid same as that. Okay. So two pi times root of L over G. Remember, notice again that L over G is there. Two pi times root of L over G. And this is exactly the same thing you end up in the simple pendulum. Only thing with the simple pendulum is that <clears throat> you don't really have a you can think of the simple in the case of the simple pendulum, either you can think of it as a torque d square theta by dt square kind of torque kind of thing, okay, or you can think of it as a force, right? And you can say mg sine theta, right? mg sine theta is what is the force in this direction, mg, right? mg, and if the, the angle that to which is to your moved it, mg sine theta, right? is the force that is is the horizontal force and you can rewrite it as m sine theta equals theta for very small theta right and so theta is what x over l <clears throat> okay so you end up with this equation d square x by dt square the m's cancel and therefore you just have 2 pi times root of l over g okay 2 pi times root of l over g remember that and so remember how this equation is derived. The m's cancel. So if you understand that, you you'll know that the mass of the, uh, uh, the is independent of the mass of the thing, independent of the x, uh, level to which you pull it, right? You pull it small distance or pull it little more doesn't matter, right? You still end up with the same period, and it's also independent. The period is independent also of the mass, okay? But it's not independent of g. If you take it to the moon, you will get a different value for the same simple pendulum. So they love to ask those questions. <clears throat> this G versus that G. Okay. So 
these are all the things 2 pi times root of l over g also here just like here 2 pi times root of l over g for block floating in a liquid now then <clears throat> if you had a rod right then you must bring in it it is still simple harmonic motion only it is using torque you write the torque equation tau equals i alpha and i uh, uh, tau is, uh, and therefore uh, uh, the, that will be uh, proportional to mgl uh, uh, by 2 the torque is uh, r cross uh, r cross f right f, f is mg right and r cross f is uh, r is l sin theta by 2 So why is that? Ng occurs from the midpoint of the rod. So this is a rod that is being simple harmonic motion. Okay, and in that case you have to use torque. Okay, the torque equation follows d square x by dt square equals kx. In this case, it is not d square x. It is d square theta by dt square equals k theta. Because sine theta will approximately equal Theta for very small theta. Okay, therefore you still get simple harmonic motion when you have a <coughs> a vertically suspended rod. You could make a um, with with a rod. Do that. <coughs> well, it is in fact you can have a you know it has some mass, right? And then this instead of the uh, you know bob at the end, you can just use the mass. You know? Uh, I don't know if there are some clocks somewhere in the world which use this, but there may very well be. Okay, so uh, well, <clears throat> so this is how simple harmonic motion works. Here you have uh, the equation of i i alpha, right? I alpha, right? And then what is the i of the rod, right? I is what moment of inertia, right? Moment of inertia is ml square by 3 about that axis right so what is the moment of inertia about that axis ml square by 3 okay and so you use that and you uh, you plug that in and therefore you have 2l by 3g the so 3 comes from because its moment of inertia is ml square by 3 right and so that's how you derive this i alpha equals mg l sin theta by 2 and sin theta is equal to theta therefore you end up with d square theta by dt square right and i is what <clears throat> ml square by 3 right <clears throat> all right so um here is the here is a interesting problem A simple pendulum is made of a body which a with a hollow sphere containing mercury suspended by means of a wire. If a little mercury is drained, right, the period of the pendulum will be. Well, see the most important idea in the uh, 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 simple pendulum. You'll feel like saying, you know, nothing really, matters, right? Which does it independent of mass, right? Two pi times square root of l by g. There's no mass, so yeah, maybe when the uh, mercury draw, uh, you know, leaks out, uh, the, the the mass is the same. So I'm just going to say remains unchanged. You get it wrong, because what happens when the mercury drains is that the length increases. The l initially is up to here, right? Now as the mercury drains. because the wire has no mass right the mercury alone has mass so at some point the length starts to increase okay initially it is at the center of this but as the mercury drops the remaining mercury has a lower center of gravity okay before the L increases to pi times root of L by g. Therefore, the period of the pendulum will increase. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a pendulum in a trolley. It has nothing to do with actually with simple harmonic motion. So I'm going to let it rest at that, and then we will continue our discussion at uh, in 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 a follow-on class. We'll kind of go over simple harmonic motion a little more, and then we will move on to other topics which. 
also uh, uh, we look at the energy equation in simple harmonic motion in the next class before we move on to additional uh, topics uh, that uh, that are very important to what you need to know okay so with that i'm going to stop and then we will continue our discussion uh, again next class okay so thank you and uh, uh, hope you all ha uh, have a great holy happy holy and then we'll see each other again uh, in a, uh, next week